Hi, this is Leah with SmartFin, and I'm with Lisa Guerrero today of Insight Edition. Lisa, so great to have you here in Phoenix. Thank you for talking to me today. This is a great day for me because this is the day my book comes out. And so, it's so beautiful. I am thrilled. Thank you. This is a big departure from Insight Edition or even sports casting. I mean, for years you've been in male-dominated roles. So when I saw this book, my goodness, I, I need the backstory. Yeah, so everybody was surprised because my background has been uh, a woman in a man's environment, both as a sportscaster originally and now as an investigative reporter where I chase bad guys. So for me to write a craft book, Jewelry for Your Table, was a, uh, a departure for sure when it comes to what my image has been on right. camera. Mm -hmm. But because I have a very stressful career, I have always been a crafter at home, and that has been my way to unwind and relax at the end of a business trip or at the end of a game day. Back when I was a sportscaster, I would come home, I would open a bottle of wine, and I would do mosaics or do one of my crafts. So for me, jewelry for your table is actually a natural extension of who I am and, and what I have to do to maintain a balanced lifestyle. I can't possibly maintain a stressful life all the time. I mean, right. I'd be in a loony bin. <laughs> so the way that I am able to relax and, um, and really kind of get a sense of who I am again is by doing crafts. And I started as a mosaic artist originally over a decade ago, and I specialize in mixed media art. Mm -hmm. And part of that mixed media has been collecting vintage jewelry as part of my mosaics. Well, a couple of years ago, during Christmas, I was getting ready to throw a family Christmas party, and I couldn't find napkin rings that I wanted that went with my Lennox Christmas plates. So I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna use plain gold ones. And I walked by a mirror, and I was wearing my grandma's Christmas pin. Aww. And I saw myself in the mirror holding the gold rings and wearing her pin, and I thought, what if I removed this pin, found out a way to take a, this pin apart and attach it to a metal ring, and then what if I used that as one of my napkin rings for the dinner party? Now, I had a collection of Christmas pins that both of my grandmothers had handed me down through the years. So I just went through that Christmas collection of pins and found 12 different Christmas pins that all worked together with these gold rings. Well, I tell you, they were the hit of the Christmas party because everybody was looking at them and talking about them and excited about them. And I put them online. I put them on Facebook, pictures on Facebook and on Twitter. And women started to say, how can I buy those? How can I make those? Um, and would you be willing to sell them to me? And instead of doing that, I thought, why don't I just teach women this technique that I had developed over several weeks of trying to figure this out. So through time, I determined that all of these brooches could be broken down into themes or colors. So cameos or baby blue or um, art deco or Victorian style or 60s mod pins. Okay. And I found the proper backing for each of them and I would make up sets of 10 or 12 per theme. I just started taking pictures and pictures. I sent a letter to Schiffer Publishing, I and mean, Schiffer does a lot of craft books and cookbooks, mm -hmm. and I said, would you be interested in publishing a book called Jewelry for Your Table, where I use these vintage brooches and create napkin rings? And they said yes. So here we are a year later, and I've got my book. It comes out today. And so it's beautiful. Now, one of the things that I really like about this, the story is you were raised by a single dad, and the book is so beautiful. Can we show our viewers how you kind of are paying homage to your mom? Sure, so um, my mom died when I was eight years old and my dad raised me and my little brother. And so I never really got to know my mom. Um, she did leave me some costume jewelry. Mm -hmm. So that was one of the basis of this book because I had collected her jewelry. But I do dedicate the book to my mother's memory. Um, in the dedication page it says, in memory of my mother Lucy, the soul of an artist, the spirit of a warrior. Because I'm Latina, and in Spanish, Guerrero means warrior. And my mother was an artist and a warrior, and she fought a battle against cancer. So she was 29 when she passed away. I was eight, 
and my dad raised me. And so the beginning of the book is kind of talking about you know my career, my life, the things I do now on Inside Edition, how I got into art, and then I go back into my heritage, um, which really kind of sets the tone for what I think women would really connect them to the book. Because we all have aunts or grandmothers or moms or sisters that may have given us costume jewelry or pins um, or earrings, things that are just collecting dust in a jewelry box right now. But I challenge you to take these pieces, in my case, this first set was Christmas pins from my grandmothers, and create something that becomes an heirloom that you can share with your own family and that honors your heritage. So in the book, I teach you to start to curate the collections that appeal to you, either because it's your design style, like favorite colors, right. themes that you care about, and shop your closet first and then your grandma's and your mom's closet. And then after that, to complete sets, I say go to a thrift store, upcycle jewelry from your own local community. And I prefer the Salvation Army thrift stores because the money you spend at the Salvation Army thrift stores stays in that community and helps uh, the adult rehabilitation centers in your community. Oh, I love that. So I, I really recommend the Salvation Army thrift stores, but whether it's Goodwill or Catholic Charities, um, there are so many good thrift stores where the money actually goes to people in need. Uh, then after that, I say go to flea markets. And my book teaches you how to barter at flea markets oh. to get the best deal. <laughs> and Americans, we, we're nervous to barter. We, like, we pay, it says something's eight bucks or we're going to pay eight bucks. I say if you're buying three or four you know, different pins at a flea market, don't pay the eight bucks. Say, hey, if I buy three, can I, you know, give you 15 bucks for three of these instead of paying eight dollars each? So I teach you how to barter in the book and then how to create your own collections. And then, of course, finally, I teach you how to make the napkin rings and then how to gift them and some good ideas about packaging them in baskets or cigar boxes oh, or, or old champagne boxes if you're giving a gift to, for example, a, a couple that's getting married and you're giving them lockets. So if the oh, locket, if they're really beautiful, and you know, put, put them in a champagne box. So anyway, I, I think it's just a, a really fun way to connect with your heritage and to upcycle costume jewelry in your community. You know, we all have costume jewelry that sometimes you just can't wear. Right. So what a great way to recycle. It really is, and I mean, a lot of the the costume jewelry that I found over the years are beautiful on its own, but I can't imagine actually wearing it. Right. You know, either they're Victorian, they're too heavy looking or too ornate, or um, they just don't seem to fit with what I'm wearing. But I wanted to dust them off and look at them and use them. You know, when I'm not using these napkin rings for a dinner party, I keep them in a big crystal bowl on my dining room table. So I always can look at them and they oh. catch the light because you know, the crystals and the gems in them are really shiny and sparkly and it looks like it's like girl candy. It is girl candy. Now, now Lisa, how can people get your book? Thank you. Um, so Jewelry for Your Table is available at schifferbooks.com, mm -hmm. S-C-H-I-F-F-E-R, that's mm -hmm. my publisher. It's also available at Amazon and at various bookstores. Try Barnes & Noble in your community. Today we're in Scottsdale, Arizona at Barnes & Noble and I'm having a book signing here later. Right. So Barnes & Noble and on the internet. Wonderful, thank you so much for coming out and see us. Yeah, thank you so much. I really appreciate what you're doing with SmartFam.